the top 10 tips and exploits you have to learn to master Warhammer 3. We all know about active traits that lords can acquire by performing certain actions on the campaign map and the battlefield such as the defeat traits of legendary lords and also race specific leadership buffs as soon as you defeat them multiple times and you can get up to maximum of 40 traits. But the thing is, you're not always gonna have 40 active traits and that is because there is another sort of trait called an active trait. These traits, much like active traits, actually take one slot toward your maximum 40 and they're gonna be utterly useless until you convert them to active traits. Some traits like the race specific leadership buffs actually require you to win multiple battles against that race but as soon as you win against that race one time, they're gonna become an inactive trait and they're gonna take one slot. So when you actually wanna make one man doom stacks, you have to be careful what sort of traits you're actually getting. And as soon as you perform one specific action like raiding or force march or even recruiting, you're gonna get their inactive traits. All of these inactive traits are gonna prevent you from getting traits after having 40 active and inactive traits. And the only way to get rid of these inactive traits is using the C-specific mod. So the next time you're actually making a one-hand doomstack, be careful not to satisfy the requirements for any of these useless traits. So that's why choosing the correct defeat traits for your legendary lord from now on is gonna feel like this. Restoring ammo trees in defensive sieges, whether it's a minor or major one, as long as you can construct a 300 point barricade like this one, what you need to do is put one unit on the barricade, and as long as one entity touches the barricade, as you can see, we're gonna restore some ammo. And you can do this by clicking on the barricade and clicking off of it, and just, as you can see, restore all of that ammo in a matter of seconds. And every time we restore ammo, we are also restoring balance of power. We might even be able to inflict army losses on the enemy if we have enough archers. So we don't even need to, you know, put all of the units on the barricade. As long as one entity of that unit touches the barricade and goes on the barricade, they're going to restock their ammo, which is insane. And you can basically do this with any unit that has any sort of ammunition and restore their ammo for completely free. And as you can see, we are restoring balance of power as well. And you can master this pretty easily and restore the ammo in a matter of a couple of seconds. And all you need to do is just put one entity of that whole unit on the garrison and they're going to restock their ammo. Pretty easy, right? You can do this on any defensive sieges, either minor or major settlements, and you can also do it with lords, although because the lord is only one entity, it's gonna be a little bit harder, but the Voodelven ones, for some reason, they restock a little bit more ammo than any other faction's units. AI massively overvalues military buildings when trading settlements. If you want to trade a settlement with another faction, especially settlements that you might lose in a turn or two, you should always build up barracks, which is a really cheap building for most factions, and then trade these settlements with AI factions, and they're going to pay you so much money because the economic value of these cities are going to massively increase, and you can easily exploit the positive opinion of AI in order to squeeze them out of their money and also befriend or even vassalize them. You can get easier confederation if you can get your allies to join more of your wars which makes them think they are weaker in their own eyes and they are more willing to get confederated by you. Similarly, if you are their military ally, you can borrow their armies and suicide them into the enemy which is gonna decrease their strength ranking and makes them more open to confederating with you. So you can do both of these to massively weaken them and easily confederate them whatever faction nice. they're gonna be. Even Tyrion is gonna fold. Have you ever been annoyed by that one army that actively avoids your army and just runs around and annoys you in order to catch these kind of armies you would want to order your army to attack them as soon as you're in their zone of influence press backspace the enemy is gonna be trapped in your zone of influence and they cannot run away anymore they either have to attack you or stay completely still which means you can actually finish them off in the following <laughs> turn so from now on no more chasing around these nuisance armies for a couple of turns as you can finish them off with this tactic terrain is more important than you might think 
damage as it can affect your movement and average success chance on the campaign map. For example, Swamp Terrain decreases the movement and Forest Terrain increases ambush success chance. In order to get more information, you can just hover over the terrain for more detail. You can also visit Warhammer Wiki for more detail about every single terrain type, both on land and seas. Terrain is a deciding factor on the battlefield, as units on the high ground have a significant advantage when fighting on a sloped terrain. Using hills and some other terrain features, you can actually make your non-stalking units be invisible from enemy's line of sight. Terrain can also have a negative effect on different unit types. For example, aquatic units perform better in shallow waters, but small entities perform worse in the same terrain, and the performance of larger entities is going to hinder in the jungles. If you're enjoying this so far, don't forget to like this video and also subscribe for more content like this. Now, let's get to the rest of the video. Killing the leader of the wall, blood host and disciple army will wipe out the whole army regardless of how much damage they have taken or the outcome of the battle so in order to make your lives easier you should always prioritize sniping the leaders of these armies so you wipe out their whole army from the face of the earth similarly you should always keep these leaders safe when you're controlling one of these armies so you don't lose a whole army there has been times that we wished our heroes started the battle with full hit points so they could have a higher chance of surviving in the battlefield what if i tell you there is a neat trick that allows your heroes to go back to full hit points so in order to do this you need to make sure your hero has access to at least one mount then you detach the hero from the army and either unequip their mount or switch their mount with another mount if they have access to another one and voila their hit points is fully restored and then you can reattach them back to the army but you have to bear in mind that you can only do this once per turn and if you detach the hero twice in a single turn you cannot reattach them into the army and you have to wait until the next turn did you know that you can actually steal artillery pieces from enemies of the same race in order to actually do this you either have to auto resolve or kill all the artillery crew but you shouldn't destroy the artillery pieces as long as you have one free slot in your army there's a really low chance of 10 percent that you can actually acquire that unit who are we kidding i know you're gonna save scum and get that piece of artillery i'm not gonna judge you though rebellion farming as malice darkblade dark elves are one of the races that can make massive profit from rebellions since when you defeat these rebels with the dark elves they provide them with money and slaves which in turn you can use them to grow your empire faster than every other race malice darkblade takes this to the next level as one of his faction mechanics when zarkan is in full possession he gives 15 silnishi corruption to all provinces his malice owns at 100 silnishi corruption every province would get negative 10 public order if you play on legendary difficulty you would get additional negative 8 public order penalty you can also acquire the sword of cane for up to negative 8 public order penalty at dominating stage also the more slaves you own the more public order penalties you're going to experience if you stack all of these penalties on top of each other you can get rebellions every couple of turns in all of your provinces and as long as you control the major settlement with a gap building you should be able to easily deal with these rebellions to get immense amount of money and slaves which in turn you will use to build up your infrastructure faster since you can rush construct buildings using slaves recruit more armies using the money you have and also activate powerful provincial dictates including extra money growth and public order so be sure to use extreme rebellion farming with malice starblade to grow your empire faster than anyone else do you need some extra cash worry not because you can always demolish buildings that you don't need as they will refund you some money similarly you can also abandon cities to refund some money but bear in mind to never demolish buildings at the same turn you're abandoning that settlement as it doesn't refund you the money for demolishing the buildings and it only refunds you the money from abandoning the city so for maximum profit you should always demolish the buildings first and as soon as all the buildings are demolished you can abandon the city i hope you guys enjoyed and learned something new from this video if you know any tricks or exploit i haven't mentioned you can let me know in the comments down below if you want to learn more about the top five tier zero units in Total War Warhammer 3, you can click on this video. This is PZ Total War and I'm gonna see you guys later.